I'm really excited to make this very video because I feel like I can now talk about this question, why you don't need to travel in order to rediscover your authentic self or to even discover your authentic self in a more fundamental way. Because I feel like this morning, a few last pieces of a very complex puzzle fell into place just like that. I cannot tell you how exactly it happened. I can just say that I can now more confidently talk about something that I've been meaning to talk about for a very long time. Whew, very long intro. Why do I want to talk about this? Because I see so many people that are struggling to be their authentic selves. And I'm not saying that as someone who is claiming that I can always be my authentic self, or I'm even at a point where I can be that. I can just say that in the last five to 10 years, I have made quite a few decisions that emotionally brought me a lot closer to what I think is my authentic self. And in the past, I have made many decisions and did many things that got me further away from my authentic self. And so in this video, I want to talk about how maybe you can try to approach this topic without having to travel far. Because I think that's something that many people tend to do, especially in the Western Hemisphere. It seems like to be the thing to travel somewhere in order to find yourself. But I don't think that's necessary. Let me take you back a couple of years in my life. Because after I finished school, I studied electrical engineering. Why did I do that? Because there was a constructed self, a constructed version of what I thought was myself. And that's absolutely normal. And probably you have that too. Because we learn to be a part of society. And in order to do that, we adapt to society and we adopt their norms and we make certain decisions that are well accepted in society. And so in my case that meant, well, what do you do after school? Well, probably you study. And what do you study? Well, maybe something that's economically clever. And from my point of view, that was electrical engineering. That was 2007. So that's a couple of years back. And I never really had any emotional connection to that. And I think that's an important point because we all construct a version of ourselves based on what society accepts and based on what we learn from being part of a larger group. And here, I think it makes sense to talk about two very basic needs of every human being. Aside from the very clear physical needs, there are two needs that we are born with. And one is autonomy. To be fully responsible for ourselves and to be fully responsible for the decisions we make on a daily basis. Ooh, sun is coming out. And the second one is connectedness. So. While on the one hand, we want to be free and we want to be fully responsible for what we do, we also want to feel connected. And we have that from the moment we are born. And if you watch little children through the course of their lives, they will begin with those two very basic needs. And based on those two very basic needs, they will learn a lot of things in the first couple of months of their lives. And thus, they will be the main characters, the protagonists of their lives for a very long time. Until. Until they are being objectified. So they become the object of someone else's narrative. And I'm talking to you, parents, because that's something that as parents, we tend to do. We tend to turn kids into objects of our own agendas. There are a lot of different ways how people do that, but whatever way you do it, it affects the kids. And it doesn't just affect kids, it also affects people when they're in their adult age. Because they feel that in order to be loved, in order to be part of a community, in order to be part of a society, they need to act in a certain way. 
and act in a certain way isn't authentic because that is part of the constructed self. So if you fast forward in those kids' lives, they will have learned to adapt in order to be part of a larger group. And they will have given away some of their authenticity for the price of being part of a larger group. They will have given up some of their autonomy just to fulfill their basic need of connectedness. And I think it's safe to say that this is something that happens to all of us through the course of our lives. And that is totally normal, that is totally natural. Because our brain is a problem-solving machine. And whenever we are in a state of extreme disorientation, our brain helps us to solve this very problem. It helps us to give us orientation because being disoriented needs a lot of energy. And the brain doesn't want to consume a lot of energy. The brain rather wants to be in a state where it's comfortable and not consuming a lot of energy. So what does this magnificent problem-solving tool do whenever we are in a disoriented state? We will get suggestions. What to do next? So if you are disoriented, you don't feel as a part of a group, your brain will give you suggestions of other people in that group that do certain things that make them seem successful and part of a group. And this will be a suggestion for you to kind of adapt to that person and adopt this behavior. And you've all experienced that. I have experienced that because whenever we don't know what to do next, we of course look to other people. What have other people done in exactly the same state? What did they do as a career? How did they evolve? What did they learn? And so we try to copy what other people did. We try to imitate their behavior. And thus the constructed self gets even more concrete. And that is a problem. Because, and for that I just need to go back a couple of years in my life, when we choose these paths, like in my case, electrical engineering, I knew deep down that it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, what my authentic self kind of was aiming towards. Because in my case, I started tutoring when I was 12. And I did that throughout my whole time at school. I did it a couple of times every week and I basically earned everything that I wanted to buy as a teenager through tutoring. A mountain bike, my road cycling bike, guitar, all of that. And I knew deep down that this was something I wanted to do. I like teaching. I like explaining. I like it when I can help people understand something. So what would have been a logical choice to do after school? Probably not electrical engineering, but still. Oh. I need to move away from the window real quick because the sun and the clouds are having a match. So in my case, what would have been the most logical choice after school? Probably not electrical engineering because electrical engineering I chose because I knew that there was some sort of a career possible. I don't regret choosing it, that's for sure, because it has opened up a lot of paths that I didn't know were possible. But still, later, in 2018, I decided that my authentic self didn't have anything to do with electrical engineering, which is why I quit my job and ever since I'm self-employed. And now the question of course is, how do people go about their authentic selves? How do they want to discover their authentic self? And I'm looking at you right now, because I think it's very common for people to, to go somewhere, to go away out of the normal life, out of their daily business in order to try and find themselves. And I think that's not the right way, or it's not the necessary way. Because doing that, I think, is part of a distraction and a distraction that we all do each and every day because everything we do with social media is in and itself just a distraction. It is not leading closer to an authentic self. It is actually feeding more 
that construct itself because we get more and more examples of people who might or might have not found their authentic selves but by watching them we get more examples of well this is something that i could do this is something that i could make part of my constructed self maybe of course we don't have that dialogue <laughs> in exactly that same way because most of the time we're not aware that this is in fact part of a constructed self but what we need to do in order to get closer to our authentic selves is entirely different and this is the part of the video where i do not want to give you any clear recommendation what you need to do and i do not want to sell you anything to do because then i would just make you an object of my agenda and everybody who's doing that with you is secretly doing that what you need to understand and what i still have to understand for myself is you need to become the subject the protagonist of your own story again in order to be your own authentic self how you do that that's entirely up to you however you will not manage to do that if you keep distracting yourself if you keep distracting yourself with social media other people's stories and ideas of success that aren't your own and I think it's especially evident when we talk about success because there are so many people claiming to be successful showing off with their material wealth and thus people feel attracted to this kind of lifestyle because they think this is part of their authentic selves when actually you don't need a lot to be happy you don't in fact need anything other than maybe your basic needs covered in order to be happy and not even that i mean there are a lot of examples of people who manage to live just well without owning a lot and what i mean by that is in order to discover your authentic self you simply need to stop distracting yourself from discovering yourself you need to find a connection to what's in fact inside of you how you feel when you go about your daily life and become a listener of what's happening inside of here and not somebody who tries to suppress that because in most of the time what we do is what we tend to do is we suppress what's coming up from inside because we have this idea of the constructed self in our mind that we have managed to build over the course of years and we have managed to suppress that feeling of maybe this is me maybe i am an artist we've managed to successfully suppress that by <laughs> this idea of the successful constructed self and if you want to do something to get closer to your authentic self learn to listen to that voice that's inside of you because then i think you can get a lot closer to your authentic self. You don't need to pay anyone any money to do that. All you need is time with yourself. You don't need to travel anywhere. You just need to pay attention to when it happens. You just need to pay attention in your everyday decisions, each and every day, how you feel inside. Whether you feel this is a good thing or you're actually internally against that decision. And this is something I wanted to bring across today because I feel like so many people are struggling with it. And like I said in the beginning, I myself, I'm not there yet, but the last years at least have shown me that I was able to make a couple of decisions that were bringing me a lot closer to my authentic self. And I wish you all the best in order to reach your authentic self because we can all live happier lives, I believe, if we do the things that we truly want because then no one can objectify us. We live our own agenda and we become independent. And that's something that makes me happy.